Welcome to Yung Tuition. I am Yung. Let's continue discussing general knowledge about climate research. So far, almost all reports on climate change have been focused on global mean surface temperature, or GMST for short. But it would appear nobody has mentioned air pressure near the surface. Does the pressure change with the surface temperature at all? If so, how? Today, I'm going to discuss this topic. Let's go and have fun. Temperature is directly associated with warm and cold. That's why it seems more effective to draw people's attention to global warming by using temperature rather than, say, air pressure or mean distance of freedom. Although they are thermodynamically dependent or even equivalent. Indeed, would you ask a stranger what is the local air pressure today? He or she would roll their eyeball as if he met someone from Mars. Not only are our bodies insensitive to air pressure change, but also their units seem too complicated, too many. Atmosphere or ATM. Bar, Pasco, Tor or Tor, PSI, mercury height in millimeter or centimeter, and so on and so forth. To be frank, I still have trouble to convert one unit from one to another without googling them from time to time. I hope you wouldn't mind going through these units today. First, the unit for pressure in System International or System International is Pasco. Or one newton per square meter. From the unit, you know, the pressure by definition is the force per unit area. By the way, Pascal was also famous for his Pascal triangle when you studied binomial theorem in high schools. If you use Pascal for the atmospherical pressure near the sea level, then you would have to use a huge number, one hundred and one thousand three hundred twenty-five. Some researchers also use hectopascal or 100 times pascal for no obvious benefit. At least it seems to me. By way of contrast, this number would be just one if you use the atmosphere or ATM for short as its unit. Using mercury in tube with one end closed, you can create vacuum of height of 76 centimeter. Near the sea level, that's why one atmosphere equal to 760 millimeter of mercury. Next, tor or tor is a unit of pressure which is equal to one millimeter height of mercury. For this simple reason, one tor equal to one divided by 760 atom, or 101,325 divided by 760, about 100. 33 pascal. Hence, one tor is close to 133 pascal. It could be argued that the mercury in tube was often used as convenient pressure gauge before electronic devices such as Perrini gauge was introduced. Still, vacuum is measured in tor rather than pascal in many、uh, research labs. Finally, if you prefer to use pound and inch, then you must know one pound per square inch, or psi, which is equal to six thousand eight hundred ninety-five point seven six pascal. <laughs> Too complicated. Okay, return to our topics. How to relate air pressure to air temperature? More specifically, what would happen to air pressure? If the global mean surface temperature increases by two degree Celsius or two K, according to ideal gas law, inside a thermally insulated container, where P is pressure, V volume, T temperature, N molar number, and R a universal constant for gas, because gas density is mass per unit volume and molar number equal to mass divided by Molar mass. Then we have this formula: P equal to nor R divided by m sub a multiply temperature T. 
it is apparent pressure is proportional to temperature if gas density is kept constant. For air, the mean molar mass is close to 28.96 gram. Obviously, the mean air molar mass is almost the same no matter how CO2 changes from doubling to three times or four times. One may ask, how can you assume air density is a constant near the surface? Well, this is what the Earth has been trying to achieve endlessly for over 14 billion years. Otherwise, the ocean would be boiling during the sunny days. Using this simple idea, if the temperature near the surface increased by 2 degrees Celsius from 288 Kelvin to 290 Kelvin, then the air pressure would increase to 1,002 and 25 Pascal, or by adding 702.6 Pascal. That's certainly not a small number, comparing with 1.5 Kelvin anomaly in the GMST, or the Global Mean Surface Temperature. Nevertheless, this is not a serious problem at all, as it happens every day and night. Because air has its freedom to move, it can freely move in space, vertically or horizontally, depending on the pressure difference and the temperature gradient. As the hot air has been replaced by relatively cold air, the surface is cooling. That's to say, the mean surface temperature can hardly be changed because only parts of the surface can be heated up by the sun. It is rather simple, isn't it? The vertical and horizontal movements of air currents are called convection and advection, respectively. Under the present air pressure near the surface, namely 760 pore or one atmosphere, or 1,001 pascal approximately, thermal radiation by surface is virtually zero, as I proposed last year. That is how weather changes, which can be, for a short period of time, predicted by numerically solving the Navier-Stox equation known as CFD, computational fluid dynamics, which is uh, basically a variation of Newton's second law of mechanics. By the way, while this video being made, the temperature outside is just 7 degrees Celsius, which is below the average minimum temperature in July, 11 degrees Celsius. How about your local temperature now? Or should I say, how about your local air pressure now? This is a good opportunity to get familiar with different units of pressure discussed in this talk. Thank you for watching. Thank you for donation. See you next time. <music>